I'm very thankful to Diritti Comparati for inviting me to say a few words about my new book, which uh, has appeared within the Breed Research Perspectives on Law and Religion. The title of the book is Religious Freedom Without Rule of Law, The Constitutional Disease of Afghanistan, Egypt and Iraq, and the Fate of the Middle East. It's a short book, so it's easy to read. And uh, it, it aims to capture the, the vicissitudes of the Middle East and the largely failed attempts to uh, generate uh, functioning rule of law systems. If we go back 20 years when invasion of Afghanistan, invasion of Iraq, and uh, the turmoil in Egypt that started and later developed into the Arab Spring, it actually was a hot spot of Arab Spring for a while, uh, we would see a lot of expectations. And most of these expectations were failed, were, uh, became disappointments um, in, in two decades or less than two decades. So why was the state building and constitution building in the Middle East largely a failure? Of course, the re recipe is not just one for the whole region. So also the diagnosis is not the same. So I wanted to single out three uh, main examples, three examples that drew uh, global attention to even global or international intervention, military intervention. If we look at what happens, a lot of expectations stemmed from the fact that uh, a rule of law constitution, a rule of law Biden constitution would effectively generate a beneficial process that would um, make those countries more stable, more respectful of the democratic process, more effective, safer for the citizens, and more, uh, more respectful of uh, fundamental freedoms, uh, among which religious freedom stood out as particularly important for many who put themselves to the task. Well, as I said, those expectations were failed, and I wanted to look into the reasons for which uh, we watched these projects fail. If we look at the basic of rule of law, um, we would at least identify three basic components, which are the components around which also A.V. Dicey, at the end of the 19th century, developed his own very influential idea of the rule of law. Um, as, uh, as far as we're concerned, um, there are three principles. The first is legal certainty and foreseeability for, for the benefit of the individuals. Um, so law must be certain, predictable in every individual, must be able to predict the consequences or of his or her uh, behavior. Second, equal laws and the same tribunals for everybody. So equality among citizens as to the rights they enjoy and as to the courts they need to um, apply to, uh, to protect their rights. And then in courts, adjudication takes place on the basis of individual rights. But these three principles, which are very, very basic and usually are not contentious as the rest of debates, uh, as the rest of the contents of rule of law, are not obvious in the Middle East. As, as I mentioned, the center of the edifice of the rule of law is the individual. But if you look at Middle Eastern territories and Middle Eastern societies, the center is not individual, it's the group. Rules are negotiated within and among groups. Uh, individual are uh, first and foremost loyal to the group. The group mediates the affiliation between the individual and the state and controversies are dealt with within and among groups. 
as you can imagine, is replaces the individual based thinking and individual based mechanisms to address uh, issues of justice with uh, group based mechanisms. And um, this has a, a lot of ramifications. When we implement individual based logic uh, with, uh, with the consequence of disparaging the group think that inhabits those territories, we're actually disrupting the systems. We're, we're trying to replace uh, a deeply seated group think and the institutions that simply and reflect the group think with a new set of systems, a new set of institutions in even a new logic. So even though many were in good faith and wanted to generate political stability and political change and protect rights, what they did was generating legal instability, political and social instability and uh, weaponized rights against the group thing. This, as I said, was largely um, involuntary. There were many who worked, as I detected and I explained in the book, were not aware of this process, that their, their ideas would trigger such a uh, um, distortion of the local institutions and local life. But that's what happened. The end of a book is about um, an alternative. I suggest that consociational systems may have been a better solution for those areas. In fact, in places like Iraq, consociations are what has remained of all those mechanisms, all those attempts to implement a rule of law based system. Constitutions have the benefit of reflecting the cultural and religious mosaic of a country within the institutions. They tend to be less effective. Establishing constitution based system generates a sort of uh, beat of powers that can largely prevent rather than cabin um, political processes and judicial processes, but that would have been probably much more a stabilizer than a rule of law based logic was. So my suggestion is that, is that we should not overlook consultations and we should actually try to understand that they are viable solution, perhaps not perfect, but a viable solution that was more respectful, respectful and is more respectful of uh, local institutions in some scenarios. Thanks again to Deliti Compagrati and I hope you enjoyed the book.